Ten years ago, the Forza franchise was described in advertising as a digital oasis where dreams are driven. And in the decades since, the Horizon series has provided vast and varied open worlds meant to deliver on that slogan's promise. After exploring three different continents between four games, the fifth entry in the series takes players to Mexico with the biggest map in Horizon history. Coupling this expansive environment with substantial alterations across a multitude of gameplay mechanics, Forza Horizon 5 represents an evolution of the foundation left by its predecessors. For better, and for worse. If there is one thing that can be said about Forza Horizon, it is that each game in the series excels at establishing a fantastic first impression, and the latest installment is no exception. Forza Horizon 5 drops the player directly into the action, quite literally, as the player actually falls from a cargo plane onto a snow-covered volcanic peak, hitting the ground running in a brand new Ford Bronco. After descending the mountainside, the player flies through a variety of exhilarating automotive experiences, from speeding a wide-body mid-engine Corvette into a sandstorm, to drifting a rally-focused Porsche 911 through the jungle, to racing a Mercedes-AMG Project 1 across the desert to the Horizon Festival. The rapid-fire jump from place to place and from car to car is overwhelming in the best kind of way presenting Horizon 5 at its most exhilarating, all the while providing just enough experience with each scenario to leave the player eagerly anticipating the content to come. More importantly, these hugely varied experiences act as a showcase for some of Horizon 5's greatest strengths, chief among which is the game's open world. Like each game in the series before it, Forza Horizon 5 is defined by its concentrated recreation of a real-world location. And while many remain disappointed that the series still hasn't set a game in Japan, it's hard to be disappointed with the open world provided by Horizon 5, especially considering the sheer scale of that world. At approximately 1.5 times the size of Horizon 4's United Kingdom, and approximately double the size of Horizon 3's Australia, the open world in Horizon 5 is easily the most vast landscape in the series' history. And that's before taking into account the unprecedented verticality provided by the world's mountainous terrain. Even more impressive than the size of the map is the sheer quantity of drivable services in the open world. With almost 600 different roadways contained in its borders, the map of Horizon 5 is not just the largest ever in a Horizon game, but it is also the most densely packed driving landscape in Horizon history. More impressive still is just how incredible these roadways are to drive. Considering that the relatively small size of prior maps in the series was partially meant to ensure the quality of the roadways within them, one might imagine that a bigger map would compromise the driving terrain of the resulting game making many of the roadways present little more than padding to fill out the vast landscape of the open world. Amazingly, despite the unprecedented quantity of driving surfaces, the quality of the roads in Horizon 5 is unwavering. The character present in the surfaces themselves, from the subtle rumble of cobblestone streets to the loose gravel of unpaved paths to the smooth and sticky adhesion of fresh asphalt, is superbly tangible. The morphological diversity of the roadways is even more superb. From flat expanses to rolling undulations, from gentle curves to tight corners to long straightaways, the delicious mix of shapes taken by Horizon 5 streets is widely varied yet consistently spectacular. There is not a roadway in the game that is anything other than a joy to drive, but as superbly heterogeneous as the roads may be, they are utterly eclipsed by the landscape beneath them. Mexico is by far the most diverse land ever brought to life in the series. According to the game's marketing, the open world boasts 11 different biomes. And while we personally find this assertion to be a bit pedantic regarding what differentiates certain biomes, it remains difficult to overstate just how variable Horizon Mexico really is. 
The open world has multiple distinct categories of desert, rolling hills of fertile farmland, opulent seaside resort communities, the harsh volcanic terrain of the caldera, tropical beaches, rocky canyons lined with evergreen trees, lush, humid rainforests, the densely packed and colorful streets of Guanajuato. The largely homogeneous English countryside of Forza Horizon 4 feels pedestrian by comparison. And not even the Australian outback of Forza Horizon 3 can quite match the sheer heterogeneity displayed by Horizon Mexico. This eclectic mix of environments is only enhanced by the game's spectacular volumetric lighting. And while the landscape looks stunning under virtually every lighting condition, the low light of dusk and the blue darkness of night in particular are simply breathtaking. Further adding to Horizon 5's environmental diversity are the seasonal deviations displayed across the Mexican landscape. A carryover from Forza Horizon 4, the world of Horizon 5 adds seasonal environmental variation that changes on a weekly basis. And while the environmental shifts are not as extreme as those in Horizon 4's United Kingdom, there remain both subtle and drastic alterations that change the character of the land itself. The deep jungle and the dunes of the Baja may be unfazed by changing seasons, but other areas of the world are dramatically transformed. The dark, rocky terrain of the caldera is blanketed with snow. Deep waterways dry out to expose traversable terrain, and muted brown fields of agriculture give way to the bright orange bloom of Mexican marigolds. All this is before even acknowledging the drastically different weather conditions that each season brings. With the wet season comes constant rainfall and the unrelenting roar of thunder, while the hot season brings massive sandstorms. It is difficult to put into words the excitement experienced as the bright blue day crossfades into an orange haze of howling wind. Despite these extreme weather conditions and the seasons that bring them, the various biomes that constitute Horizon's rendition of Mexico never cease to maintain a distinct identity from one another. Granted, the temporal relationship between biomes can occasionally feel rather abrupt, with dense jungle giving way to desert shrubbery in a matter of meters, but overall, it's hard to think of any game that has so cohesively combined such disparate terrains with such a high degree of competence much less while portraying each environment with such breathtaking beauty. While the visual splendor of Mexico and the roadways that line its landscape combine to form a compelling open world, the little details nestled between the streets and shrubs are what bring that world to life. From the magnificent murals of street artists like Farid Rueda, to the peculiar placement of a single piñata in the middle of an otherwise vacant golf course, the unique and often subtle touches added to the Mexican map increase the value of exploring beyond visiting scenic views or racing every road. Further adding to this sense of sentience is the literal life that populates Horizon Mexico. Like its predecessors before it, the human beings lining the bleachers and sidewalks of Horizon 5 transcend the crude cardboard cutouts of other racers in favor of surprisingly detailed 3D models, complete with realistic proportions and eyes that glint in the sunlight. Of course, the quality remains far below that of more character-focused games, but for a genre whose human models are all too often crudely chiseled facsimiles, the presence of such a high level of detail in something that most players will pass at over 150 miles per hour remains impressive. Much of the animal life in the game is better still. From the semi-matte coat of a hairless dog to the horizontal pupils of a bighorn sheep, each of the mammals present in the game is portrayed with superb precision. Even something as pedestrian as a donkey is meticulously recreated in Horizon 5. Sadly, while every mammalian asset included in the game is afforded fantastic quality, the same cannot be said of the various birds that populate Horizon Mexico. With chickens as the one notable exception, every bird in the game is shockingly crude in its construction. For comparison, here is what a red parrot looks like on ultra settings in Forza Horizon 3, and here is what the same red parrot looks like on the same settings in Horizon 5. 
The difference in both texture detail and polygonal complexity is so severe, one would be forgiven for thinking that these assets belonged to games developed decades apart. Granted, this was likely done to ensure smooth performance, and the extreme contrast in quality would almost certainly be imperceptible during normal gameplay. However, considering just how much of an emphasis the game places on using its photo mode to capture the spectacular beauty of the open world, it's baffling that what should be the most photogenic wildlife in the game is rendered at such a subpar level of quality. Unfortunately, the rudimentary geometric shapes of seagulls are not the only visual inconsistency present in Horizon 5. The game suffers from a simply jaw-dropping amount of rock and foliage popping on anything below extreme settings. While the game is impressively competent in its ability to render thickly detailed areas like the canyon and the rainforest, it struggles with less dense environments to a frankly shocking degree. From bushes to boulders, the terrain will crossfade from blurry to photorealistic mere meters in the distance, sometimes not fully rendering until a few feet prior to the front bumper, resulting in visual pop-in that is often distracting and occasionally horrifying. While this issue has primarily affected the PC version of the game, many people playing on the Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles have reported similar issues. Again, these issues are rectified by paradoxically adjusting level of detail settings to extreme on the PC version of the game, but the trade-off is inconsistent frame rates and frame pacing on anything below very high-end hardware. That said, in the same way that the PS1 standard seagulls are shocking relative to the other animals, the pop-in-based performance issues wouldn't be as readily apparent if the foliage and environments themselves weren't so jaw-droppingly gorgeous. And despite these few technical shortcomings, Horizon 5 still offers a breathtaking view. It's just disappointing how that view can often take a bit longer to appear than it should. Aside from offering enjoyable driving and breathtaking beauty, Horizon 5's open world is host to a wide variety of different challenges, each of which rewards a specific automotive skill set. Labeled PR stunts, these impromptu activities sprout across the open world over the course of play, challenging players to maintain momentum through the countryside, get sideways around hairpin turns, and take flight across the Mexican sky. Most of these challenges will come as no surprise for returning Horizon players, but what might be surprising is the sheer scope they display, as each challenge category facilitates more extreme stunts and far higher scores than in prior games. Danger signs will have longer runways leading to their launch ramps, while drift zones will expect players to slide across larger stretches of roadway. In turn, the scores expected by PR stunts have also increased, requiring greater performance from the player to achieve higher star ratings. Frustrating though it can be to miss the cutoff for a 3-star rating, these increased expectations make PR stunts all the more satisfying to surmount, and the feeling of achieving 3 stars on a grueling drift zone has never been more gratifying. While the vast majority of PR stunt variants are carryovers from prior games in the series, Horizon 5 does offer one notable exception. Trailblazers challenge players to race from a start point to an end point within a specific time limit, reserving the actual path towards the finish line to the player's prerogative. While most other PR stunts are relatively rigid regarding player trajectory, Trailblazers live up to their name by allowing players to quite literally blaze their own trails across Mexico's uneven and variable terrain. By incentivizing player agency in a way unachievable by other challenges, Trailblazers offer unique and enjoyable departure from standard PR stunts, as creative approaches are often critical for crossing the finish line. Brilliant! Next time I'm late for a meeting on the other side of the festival, I'm calling you! While PR stunts deliver perhaps the most apparent addition to open-world activities, they are not the only example. Barn finds return to Horizon Mexico, incentivizing open-world exploration with a fantastic selection of classic cars. However, besides motivating player discovery, barn finds allow for peer-to-peer -peer philanthropy as well. 
for the first time in series history, discovered barn find locations in the open world become drop-off zones for automotive donations, allowing players to gift cars to one another. While it would be nice to gift cars directly to specific players, the opportunity to give an unwanted car to another real person who might appreciate it, whoever that person may be, remains a wonderfully altruistic addition to Horizon 5. Wow, that's generous. Well, just the spirit of Horizon, isn't it? Shall we send a thank you? Unfortunately, while many of Horizon's standard open-world activities demonstrate meaningful adjustments and additions, the one challenge category in dire need of improvement is left essentially untouched in Horizon 5. To put it crudely, the collectibles in Forza Horizon 5 kinda suck. Like each prior entry in the series, Horizon 5's open world is dotted with smashable bonus boards meant to incentivize exploration by providing perks to the player. And in all fairness, the hunt for these collectibles is often enjoyable. When the player is close, each bonus board emits thematically suitable mariachi music, allowing for an unexpectedly charming form of echolocation. The challenge of finding the board is often followed with the challenge of smashing through it. And while many boards are simply sitting on the shoulder of a highway, many others sit in more precarious positions, requiring a considerable amount of forethought to hit. Though overcoming these challenges is often satisfying, the rewards bestowed by these boards feel inadequate given the effort limited to XP boosts and discounts for fast travel functionality that five games in still inexplicably costs in-game currency to use. While this is nothing new for longtime Horizon players, these subpar rewards are all the more egregious due to their persistence. And while the satisfaction of smashing a hard-to-reach or hard-to-find board may be its own reward to a certain extent, the novel collectibles in games like Doom Eternal demonstrate clearly that Forza Horizon 5 is well overdue for overhauling their dated bonus board system. Though the spontaneous challenges dotted around the map often provide stimulating driving scenarios, it wouldn't be much of a racing game without the inclusion of actual racing. And like its predecessors before it, competitive driving in Forza Horizon 5 is phenomenal. From enclosed circuits to point-to-point -point sprints, the various courses on offer in Horizon 5 provide a rich variety of raceable roadway, highlighting the dramatic morphological diversity displayed by the open world. Compelling though each corner of a course may be on its own, in the context of the competition for which they are designed, the tracks of Horizon 5 are nothing less than spectacular. Even small circuits pack in wonderful combinations of tight turns and high-speed S's, each of which offers unique opportunities for building speed and overtaking opponents. On the subject of opponents, the racing is all the more spectacular due to the expectedly admirable implementation of AI. Once again relying upon the neural network-based Drivatar system, these player-based digital opponents can offer some surprisingly stiff competition around a track, breaking late in anticipation of attempted overtakes and exploiting player understeer to speed past on the inside line. While AI opponents occasionally take corners at unexpectedly slow speeds, on the right difficulty settings, Drivatars are nonetheless worthy opponents the vast majority of the time, and on the higher difficulty settings, they often facilitate even harder fights for position than their real-world counterparts. While the racing itself is fantastic in a vacuum, in the context of its predecessors, competitive driving in Horizon 5 doesn't offer any noteworthy additions over earlier entries in the series. In fact, many valuable features have inexplicably been stripped out. While dynamic difficulty adjustments carry over from prior Horizon games, far fewer of them result in increased payouts at the end of a race, limiting their utility to a sense of pride in accomplishment and disincentivizing personal improvement. Furthermore, the option to limit Drivatar aggression available in sister series Forza Motorsport is still entirely missing from Horizon 5. And while the Drivatar system has been considerably fine-tuned since the original implementation of the neural network-based AI, 
the continued absence of this feature in the Horizon series remains disappointing, as it isn't uncommon for typically professional drive guitars to resort to paint swapping in order to maintain position. Fortunately, in contrast to the surprisingly spartan accommodations made for difficulty settings, the options available for race modification have never been better. Horizon 3's blueprint mode and the building blocks for Horizon 4's Super 7 have been combined to create Horizon 5's Event Lab, and this novel combination provides an unsurprisingly massive amount of creative freedom. Persisting as a subcategory of Horizon 5's Event Lab, the aforementioned Blueprint Mode acts as a foundation for this creativity, allowing players to craft bespoke race events with specific course routes, seasons, weather conditions, car restrictions, and even specific background music. If a player is unsatisfied by the pre-built selection of course routes provided by the game, they can even build their own track checkpoint by checkpoint to satisfy their creative vision. More liberating still are the available add-ons for these tailored tracks. Taking advantage of the toolbox provided by Super 7, custom routes are further personalized with a wide selection of cosmetics, permitting players to line their racetracks with everything from spectator seating to literal dinosaurs. As wonderful as these cosmetic inclusions can be, they are utterly eclipsed by the sheer breadth of gameplay alterations available in Event Lab. Ramps and bounce pads, aside from being enjoyable additions to a course route, actively transform the driving terrain itself, adding an entirely new dimension to movement and necessitating novel approaches to traversal. More transformative still is the ability to change the rules of the race itself. Using a selection of adjustable triggers and conditions, players are afforded the ability to implement gameplay alterations ranging from simple sound effects to major mechanical overhauls. By programming new rules of play into a challenge, players not only alter the approach necessary for their custom challenges, but can go so far as to transform the very nature of the challenge itself, creating entirely new types of events to experience. While the tools available for customization are often overwhelming and obtuse, Event Lab is nonetheless the best creative tool in any driving game. And as several different raceways and challenges have already demonstrated, the only real limitation to what can be made is the imagination of the player making it. Whether the player decides to engage drift zones or to indulge their creative instincts, each of the challenges on offer in Horizon 5 acts in service to the game's central progression system. In contrast to the perpetual and inconsequential single-player mode in Horizon 4, Horizon 5 provides a single-player structure akin to earlier entries, delivering a far more purposeful campaign in the form of Horizon Adventure. Like Horizon 3's single player, Horizon Adventure tasks the player with opening and expanding new festival sites across the open world. To do this, players must earn accolades, a form of experience points unlocked through the completion of various challenges and achievements in the game. From getting three stars in a trailblazer to discovering every road on the map, each accomplishment has a specific number of accolades awarded upon completion. And after earning enough accolades, players are rewarded with tokens that can be used to unlock and expand the various festival sites of Horizon Mexico. Besides the basic benefits of adding new races and PR stunts to complete, the accolade-based system also delivers some novel diversions from standard challenges. Horizon Stories provide players with a wide selection of different multi-chapter events with a specific premise, from doing stunt work for a movie studio to helping a woman restore her family's long-lost Volkswagen Beetle. While the connection between the challenges themselves and the plot lines that contain them are often tenuous at best, Horizon Stories remain a wonderful excuse to indulge in some enjoyable automotive scenarios. <laughs> I don't want to see that telemetry on how close that was. Additionally, the series' iconic showcase events make an expected and welcome return, once again setting up unique battles between specific cars and distinctly non-automotive forms of transportation. 
As has been the case in every sequel, the showcase events in Horizon 5 are structurally identical to those from prior entries in the series, bringing with them all the same pros and cons. While the specific scenarios of each showcase are visually distinct from those in prior Horizon games, the races themselves remain rigged in favor of the player, sapping a considerable amount of joy from taking the checkered flag. It's not that these events should be punishingly difficult to complete, but it would be nice if the game did a better job of hiding the contrived nature of these competitions. Of course, it's hard to stay mad when the setups for these events are so intriguing, and while these showcases feel devised by a think tank full of ten-year-olds, they're all the more enjoyable because of it. From monster trucks to an asymmetrical triathlon competing with a Cosworth, each showcase is an absolute joy with moments that honestly took our breath away. Fun as these side quests are, by far the most enjoyable novelty in Horizon 5 are expeditions. Used as the pretense for opening a new festival site, each expedition presents a three-part journey where players do everything from exploring ancient Mayan ruins to helping volcanologists research the erupting caldera. Aside from the novelty provided by each premise, expeditions are unique from other challenges due to their priorities. Expeditions may expect the player to follow a specific path to a specific location, but the skills achieved along the way and the speed needed to arrive at the destination are at the player's discretion. Once the player arrives at a location, they are presented with multiple tasks, which while fun and beneficial to progression, are completely optional. By making both the player's performance and task completion largely voluntary, the player is afforded a unique freedom. Without having to be concerned about reaching a certain speed or finishing first, novelties like drifting around pools of lava in a Ford RS200 or guiding a parade float down a beachside festival can be fully appreciated for the exceptional experiences they are, allowing players to enjoy the world of Horizon Mexico at both its most extreme and its most beautiful. Like the expeditions themselves, the aforementioned accolade system present in Horizon Adventure affords players with a large amount of autonomy in how they experience Mexico. The order of unlocking festival sites and the unique challenges that come with them are all at the player's prerogative. Additionally, the total number of available accolades in the game are well in excess of the number necessary to fully unlock every festival site, ensuring that players can always choose how they want to progress through the game. However, there are limitations to this apparent freedom. The number of unlocked tokens needed for outpost upgrades varies, and some outpost upgrades are predicated on the unlocking of other missions in the outpost lineup. Furthermore, the accolades used to earn upgrade tokens, while plentiful, are ultimately limited. Finishing first on a specific race route will give the player all the available accolades for that event, but a repeat performance on the same course will net nothing more. The limited utility of specific challenges, combined with the differing costs and availability of outpost upgrades, facilitates an incredibly enticing and enjoyable single-player system, balancing a vast amount of autonomy in player progression with just enough specific limitations to encourage player experimentation. Put simply, Horizon Adventure is the best campaign mode in the series. It allows players to stay in their comfort zone while simultaneously, and fittingly, nudging players to broaden their horizons, incentivizing previously reluctant players to enter events they may have never known they wanted. Unfortunately, until recently, the same could not be said of the game's multiplayer. While the multiplayer menu was far more user-friendly than the one in the previous game, it also had far fewer available options, limiting online competition to a small handful of categories and omitting the ability to search for more specific races entirely. As a result, players who wanted to race cars in a specific class on a specific type of terrain would be restricted to either joining and leaving open racing lobbies until they randomly entered the event they wanted, or slogging through other events until the one they wanted finally appeared. It is worth noting that regardless of these restrictions, every event is fun to play. Playground games like Infected and Flag Rush are an absolute blast, especially given the arenas provided by the game and open racing provides reliably steep competition. 
Of course, there are still issues with ramming and other unsporting behavior, but various measures employed by the developers, like the ghosting system, go a long way in mitigating these problems and facilitating a far more fair, if still characteristically chaotic, sprint to the finish line. Still, nothing included here is particularly new, and the long-imposed limitations on multiplayer racing only soured an already stale offering. Horizon Arcade initially seems to follow this trend. At first glance, the supposedly new mode seems to be little more than Forzathon Live from the previous game, consisting of a small handful of minigames for groups of players to complete within a 10-minute time limit. However, proximate though the resemblance may be, Arcade possesses several marked improvements over its predecessor. Unlike the once hourly availability of Horizon 4's Forzathon Live, Horizon 5's Arcade is available persistently, allowing players to immediately jump into another round without needing to wait 60 minutes of real-world time in order to do so. Better still, there are multiple Horizon Arcade sessions available at any given time, each distinguished from one another based upon the specific types of minigames available. Unlike in Forzathon Live, where players had to drudge through a dice roll of activities, Horizon Arcade allows players a refreshing degree of freedom, both removing the tedium of changing cars to complete different tasks and allowing players to choose challenges they actually want to complete. Best of all, Horizon Arcade scales the points necessary to complete each challenge based upon the total number of participants, ensuring that a pair of players never finds themselves pointlessly plodding away at a six-person job. Even alone, a single player can complete every challenge in Horizon Arcade and have an absolute blast doing it. Round three complete! Congratulations! Extensive though these improvements may be, Horizon Arcade still represents little more than a thin silver lining on an otherwise dark cloud, ultimately failing to outweigh the game's myriad of multiplayer shortcomings, all of which are frustrating enough before even accounting for the actual flaws present after launch. In the months following the game's release, players experienced a litany of problems in multiplayer, including disappearing textures, abnormally long loading times, and frequent server disconnections. Even the simple act of trying to join a friend in Horizon Life proved to be an uphill battle, as even when the game finally connected both players on the same server, player vehicles were still liable to disappear randomly during a session. Oh. You hear me, right? <laughs> what the fuck? What the As may be obvious by our use of the past tense, most of these issues have been fixed in the months since the game's launch, but the fact that these problems were so frequent for so many players in the first place remains shocking. Frankly, it's unacceptable for breakages like this to persist for so long in a game that places such a high priority on getting players online. Returning to single player, the campaign has its own readily apparent problem. While the aforementioned Horizon adventure is intriguing, the narrative meant to hold that experience together is anything but. After an admittedly alluring opening, what could be generously described as Horizon 5's story amounts to little more than a few in-engine cutscenes and bits of radio chatter that are, at best, completely inconsequential. This bocho eats up cross-country like my tío eats tamales. At worst, they are cheesy and cringe-inducing interruptions to the action. After a drive like that, I need the baño. The focus placed upon the story prior to launch makes the end result all the more disappointing before even acknowledging its squandered potential. From the back and forth between festival lead Alice and a troublesome competitor in the first game, to the comedic commentary of head mechanic Warren in the third game, the developers have demonstrated their ability to write entertaining dialogue in the past. And considering that the increased emphasis on story in Horizon 5 provides a fantastic foundation for compelling screenwriting, it's all the more disappointing that the dialogue present in the game is so exceedingly bland, especially given the effort put into the playable character. After arriving at the festival, the player is able to pick an avatar, change their hairstyle and color, add prosthetic limbs, select their voice, and even pick their specific pronouns. It's a fantastic selection of personalization options that is rendered almost meaningless by vacant characterization. This thing is fast. The personality given to the player character is so aggressively inoffensive and painfully generic that even a silent protagonist would have been more endearing. Combined with the excessively chipper dialogue, the end result feels like something aimed at young children as opposed to all audiences, representing little more than a wasted opportunity. 
That's enough playing with fire for one day. While the cutscenes and characters may provide players with little motivation to progress, the rewards provided by the racing itself are distinctly generous, allowing players to jump from Fords to Ferraris within a single session. Before we continue, we would like to clarify our position on the game's progression. Many players have described the game as overly rewarding, citing the ability to acquire an exotic supercar in a matter of hours instead of days as detrimental to the experience. To a moderate extent, we disagree with this position, primarily due to the circumstances surrounding this sentiment. Many of those concluding that Horizon 5 is overly rewarding are doing so based upon their playthrough of the Ultimate Edition of the game, a version that not only gives the player multiple expensive items and cars for free, but also doubles the earnings the player receives at the end of every race. Furthermore, this belief often rests upon incongruous comparisons with other games. Many decrying Horizon 5's prompt progression are doing so because it differs from the more gradual growth of earlier open-world racers like Test Drive Unlimited. However, what many fail to note in this comparison is the difference in the scale of content between games and how this difference demands differing approaches to progression. Test Drive Unlimited's car list was a carefully curated selection of around 70 vehicles, a number necessitating delayed gratification to ensure a more satisfying experience. Given that Horizon 5's car list is over seven times the size of that in TDU, along with the fact that many of the most desirable cars in the game cost well in excess of a million credits to own, the stride of the game's progression makes far more sense. A player may sit behind the wheel of a Ferrari within a few hours, but it will take far longer to acquire the dozens more left to collect. Further rationalizing the game's economy is the presence of distinctly non-automotive products to purchase in Horizon Mexico. Aside from prosthetics and pronouns, players are afforded the opportunity to alter the attire of their personal avatar, adjusting everything from cargo pants to baseball caps. Unlike the wheel-spin-dependent personalization in Horizon 4, Horizon 5's clothing items can be directly purchased with credits, allowing players to more easily indulge in character customization, including new options like masks and socks. Still, this option represents a half-step for in-game individualization, as many clothing items remain withheld behind in-game progression, time-limited storefronts, and wheel spins. More disappointing, the quantity of clothing content seems to have taken a step back compared to its predecessor, as many items available in Horizon 4 weren't carried over to its sequel. What remains is a pedestrian and overpriced collection of purchasable garments with a curation of more intriguing outfits locked behind random drops. While still an improvement over the system in Horizon 4, it's a nominal one at best. Even more underwhelming is the virtually unchanged implementation of player houses in Horizon 5. Another carryover from Horizon 4, the Mexican backdrop represents the one notable change from its British predecessor. Aside from the handful of perks and bonuses offered by each property, the houses sold across Horizon Mexico only alter the background of the main menu, representing little more than the video game equivalent of swapping out screensavers on a computer. Given the breathtaking beauty offered by these abodes, the property provisions in Mexico would seem sufficient if not for the frustration they represent. Aside from being a frankly extortionate time sink, Horizon 5's housing, like the aforementioned cutscenes and dialogue, represent a massive waste of potential. Real estate listings describe alluring amenities like private swimming pools, entertaining spaces, and full-time caretaking staff, while the houses themselves only offer a few in-game perks and a new backdrop for the player's car. Considering that other open-world racing franchises like Test Drive Unlimited have allowed players to explore and even customize the interiors of their properties, the bait-and-switch presentation of the houses in Horizon 5 is an even more frustrating fiasco. It's easy to derive disappointment from Ramiro mentioning ample garage space that the player knows they will never see. Pool, beach views, lots of rooms. And don't worry, the garage is big too, I checked. Fortunately, while the mansions in Horizon Mexico are as mediocre as those in the prior entry, the exact opposite is true of the most important aspect of the game, the one feature around which everything else revolves, the cars. As can be expected, the roster of vehicles in the game is both enormous and eclectic. With over 500 different autos available to drive, Forza Horizon 5 has the largest car list ever included in a standard version of a Horizon game. 
More importantly, this volume is surpassed by its variety, consisting of everything from rare classics like the 1968 Ford Mustang GT, to modern buggies like the Sierra RX-3, to ultra-high-performance hypercars like the game's cover car, the Mercedes-AMG Project One. Better still, this diverse car list is not only impressive in terms of quantity, but also quality. As is the case with the landscapes in which they drive, the automobiles in Horizon 5 are breathtakingly beautiful. The models are as meticulously detailed as ever. Convertible tops are exceptionally animated. Superb implementation of ambient occlusion plants each vehicle firmly in the world. Starburst highlights allow cars to shine like diamonds in the sunlight. And the cube map reflections on the bodywork are often convincing enough to be mistaken for ray tracing. Of course, much of this praise can be attributed to prior entries in the series, but minor improvements to modeling and lighting facilitate subtle, yet noticeable improvements. Perhaps the most noteworthy of these improvements is found in Forza Vista, the long-established explorative mode permitting players a more intimate exploration of their collection. Aside from allowing players to open doors and admire engines, Forza Vista now enables ray tracing, allowing cars to realistically reflect their own beautiful bodywork for the very first time. Never before in the series have the cars themselves looked quite this good. The visual customization is also defined by mild adjustments to the Forza formula. As many franchise faithfuls expected, the superb functionality of paint job personalization and decal application attributed to the series persists in Horizon 5. Special colors and granular adjustments to saturation allow players to create the perfect shade while the ability to differentiate distinct sections of the bodywork enables specific alterations to accents and trim. A vast array of different decals combined with transparent masks to allow for the creation of awesome automotive designs with near-surgical precision. Still, while all of these abilities provided by the game's paint tools are greatly appreciated, none of them are novelties in Horizon Mexico. Even the long-awaited inclusion of paintable brake calipers represents little more than a carryover from an earlier entry on the Xbox 360. However, this isn't to say that the game is bereft of improvements or adjustments, and while the general formula remains unchanged, a few key alterations bring appreciated improvements to the entire system. Chief among these alterations is an overhaul of the user interface, consolidating the collection of vertical menus from prior games into a single grid-based selection of decal options. While initially obtuse for players accustomed to earlier interfaces, the grid layout is far more simple to use compared to prior entries, allowing players adjusted to the interface to craft compositions with unprecedented ease. Better still, the decals added via the grid interface are also improved relative to earlier games, displaying higher resolutions and better anti-aliasing than their contemporaries in Horizon 4. In combination, these ostensibly mild alterations represent surprisingly substantial improvements to the overall painting experience in Horizon 5, making an already superb suite of tools and textures both easier to use and better to admire than ever before. While the vehicles provide both a visual feast and an ample canvas for creative expression, the game would be little more than an automotive paint simulator without well-implemented driving mechanics. Fortunately, where the rubber meets the road, Forza Horizon 5 delivers quite possibly the best experience of any entry in the open world series. Akin to the game's visual splendor and artistic outlets, the driving in Horizon 5 represents a subtle yet profound refinement of the series' already spectacular physics. Inputs register with unparalleled directness and phenomena like body roll or lost grip are communicated with unprecedented clarity. Put simply, it feels as though a sheer but stubborn veil, one that ever so slightly obfuscated the automotive experience in prior entries, has finally been pulled away. More than simply a practical improvement, these alterations provide unparalleled access to the simple satisfaction of driving inherent to such a diverse collection of cars. Every vehicle is its own entity, and the minute modifications to the driving model enhance the unique experience provided by each and every automobile. The Land Rover Defender has the heft and stability of a boulder with the turning radius to match, while the Toyota Supra's tail-happy rear end is easily controllable thanks to the steering's responsiveness. Even between extremely close competitors, the contrast between cars is strikingly clear. 
The Ferrari Enzo is firmly planted to the pavement, taking turns with just the slightest hint of understeer, while the more knife-edge nature of the Porsche Carrera GT rewards focused drivers with surgical precision around corners. While it's certainly true that Forza's handling feedback has always been superb, it is simultaneously difficult to explain or overstate just how much better driving feels in Horizon 5. As varied as the viscera of each vehicle may be, the diversity of driving phenomena grows exponentially thanks to predictably exceptional tuning and upgrade options. Like so many other aspects of the game's car-centered suite, Horizon 5's automotive upgrade experience represents a subtle yet substantial improvement upon the systems that preceded it. And the ostensibly identical process of improving performance belies gratifying additions for those willing to dive deep under the hood. Aside from the aforementioned grid layout, the upgrade menu acts as a portal to thousands of new options covering every aspect of automotive enhancement. Disparate tire compounds drastically alter the experience of driving across different surfaces, and the distinct nuances between multiple subvariants of tire compounds creates an engrossing dilemma for performance-minded players. Transforming the previously unengaging process of picking the highest performance tire into a careful calculation accounting for both a train's topography and morphology. The greatly expanded selection of differential and transmission options open new possibilities for tinkering and fine-tuning while the often eclectic selection of engine swaps can transform even something as pedestrian as a Vacho into a vehicular bullet. Better still, many of the added upgrades transcend mere performance improvements to enhance each car's visual presentation. The addition of over 100 new rims and the considerable increase to rotiform selection in particular vastly expands the diversity of unsprung weight reduction and aesthetic options. An extensive collection of bumpers and body kits ensures that JDM fanatics can finally live the dream of driving a wide-body Supra. And even exotics from McLaren and Lamborghini offer a respectable selection of alternate bodywork options. It is admittedly disappointing seeing the selection of body kits reduced with the absence of Rocket Bunny options at launch, but what remained in their absence and persists after their reintroduction is nonetheless a respectable assemblage of bodywork possibilities. Alongside the streamlined user interface, the sheer scope of available alterations from flared fenders to 10-speed transmissions would already represent a respectable improvement before accounting for what may be the most appreciated addition to the upgrade system. As beautiful as it may look, Forza Horizon 5 sounds more beautiful still. After the admittedly underwhelming engine notes in Horizon 4, Playground Games took the opportunity afforded by increased development time to overhaul the audio for Horizon Mexico, and it shows. From the hearty baritone of a Lamborghini V10 to the high-pitched whine of a Ford GT supercharger, each car is distinct from one another while simultaneously authentic to the genuine article. The audible aspiration of each automobile adds layers to an already sumptuous soundtrack, and the sound of screeching tires is only surpassed by the visual splendor of the thick clouds of smoke left in their wake. Even lifting off the accelerator can create a treat for the ears. Of course, the symphony of exhaust notes is far from the only metaphorical music in the game. The ambient audio unique to each environment perfectly complements the visual splendor of its respective region, and a wide selection of novelty horns can enhance already amusing situations. An eclectic soundtrack has hits ranging from Little Nas X to the Foo Fighters, not to mention the exceptional tracks written specifically for Horizon 5. Even so, the automotive audio, enhanced further by the inclusion of wave tracing, is undeniably the cherry atop the caldera in Horizon Mexico.
That said, even in comparison to the symphony created by each vehicle, the wailing of the naturally aspirated V12 in the Lamborghini Murcielago SV is particularly special. Rich and unrelenting, the throaty howl of this supercar is, in our opinion and despite steep competition, the most spectacular sound in the entire game, and well worth a purchase from the auto show for the audio alone. At least, it would be if it were in the auto show. Unfortunately, the Murcielago, along with nearly three dozen other in-game vehicles, are completely inaccessible through the auto show and are only available through the game's random chance-based wheel spins, themselves limited to specific car mastery progression or leveling up in single player. Worse still, the game of luck required to obtain these vehicles by a wheel spin is twofold as the player needs to both unlock a wheel spin with an exclusive car and have that wheel spin select that exclusive car as the reward, both outcomes resting entirely upon random number generation. It's an end result necessitating such a large amount of luck that within our approximately 200 hours playing Forza Horizon 5 in preparation for this review, it only ever occurred once making these cars all but unattainable without an internet connection. While these cars are readily available from the online auction house for the time being, there's no telling how long this avenue for acquisition will last, and prior games have shown that it can only be a matter of months before certain cars become little more than vehicular vaporware. Combined with the fact that so many machines withheld by wheel spins are coveted cars like the Ford GT and McLaren F1, the operational roster of available vehicles is left with egregious omissions, all before acknowledging the damage caused down the line. Hey, mi amigo. These are all the cars you've ever owned. There are some gaps in your collection, though. You should do something about that. In addition to holding dozens of cars hostage directly behind wheel spins, this artificially imposed scarcity also indirectly withholds more vehicles through the car collection system. Falsely framed as a reward system, car collection exclusive vehicles are locked away from the player until they collect every other car belonging to the same manufacturer. Aside from being a tedious time sink, most of the cars locked behind collection completion belong to manufacturers with wheelspin exclusive vehicles, effectively eliminating icons like the Lamborghini Raventon and LaFerrari from the car list and rendering the operational roster even more ransacked than before. While all the chunks retroactively ripped from the vehicle roster are frustrating enough on their own, they are merely emblematic of the greatest flaw with Horizon 5. This game reserves a special contempt for both the player's time and the offline single-player experience as a whole, a fact made irrefutable by the simple act of clicking the pause button. As most viewers probably know, the purpose of a pause button in a video game is to temporarily freeze the on-screen action, allowing the player to attend to more pressing matters. Unfortunately, this functionality taken for granted in almost every other game is largely absent in Horizon 5. Time marches on in Mexico regardless of the pause button, meaning a player that pauses the game during a sunny mid-afternoon to do their laundry or walk their dog could easily return to a rainy evening. The positions of cars may stay the same, but the time of day and weather conditions can and will change in real time. Up until recently, even the game's photo mode was at the mercy of the ever-moving in-game clock, putting immense pressure on the player to take the shot before the exposure was involuntarily adjusted. While this problem was ultimately resolved by a patch, the underlying issue it highlighted returns the second the player exits to the main game. There is no option, even in single player, to pause or change either the in-game weather or time of day. Additionally, the player is also precluded from changing the in-game season, instead locking the players to whatever weekly season is imposed by the in-game clock. While understandable in online free roam, this artificially imposed limitation needlessly plagues the offline experience. Even without an internet connection, a player that just missed the opportunity to drive through a dust storm will have to wait several real-world weeks for the opportunity to return. More contemptuous still are the borderline coercive tactics implemented to pressure players into largely involuntary online interactions. 
Aside from an aggressive prompt hounding players to join a multiplayer session every time they enter offline free roam, the game further grooms players for always online play with its inescapable live service elements. From the unavoidable welcome back screen detailing time-limited challenges, to the Forzathon shop with its time-limited offers, to the time-limited decorations adorning the open world, Horizon 5 deliberately manufactures consent for online play by cultivating a fear of missing out within its player base. A phenomena made all the more repulsive by the time-limited exclusive cars offered as rewards. Following in the footsteps of Horizon 4, many of these seasonal reward cars in Horizon 5, dishonestly described as new additions, are nothing more than cars removed prior to release in order to artificially inflate participation in the seasonal reward system. Even worse, access to these cars is contingent on completing time-limited challenges during each in-game season often requiring players yearning for a particular car to organize specific days or even weeks of their free time around accomplishing certain activities or accumulating enough points to acquire the desired automobile. It's a frustrating scenario best summarized by Folding Ideas creator Dan Olson in his discussion of World of Warcraft Classic. If everything is meaningful, if it's all significant content that provides a reward of appropriate value and they're all on daily or weekly reset timers, well, at a certain point, it stops feeling like options and starts to feel like an obligation. The end result of having so many desirable and fan-favorite cars held hostage behind time-limited trials is the transformation of potentially enjoyable activities into tedious busy work. Not a game you play, but a game that plays you. Make sure you check back each season to see what's on. Even putting aside the insidious implementation of a live service model, Horizon 5 still finds ways to punish players who are either unwilling or unable to go online. The aforementioned challenge creation mode event lab is functionally useless without an internet connection. The game will permit players to craft and test a custom event, but it will not let the player publish that event without the online server's approval, preventing players from making any in-game currency from their work. Perhaps worst of all, the game itself, including every challenge, every car, and the entire open world, is completely inaccessible without an internet connection. People in rural areas or who otherwise lack internet access will be completely unable to enjoy Forza Horizon 5 as even the physical copy of the game depends on approximately 100 gigabytes of content delivered exclusively via download through Microsoft servers to function. Given that Forza Motorsport 3 came with multiple discs despite launching during the biggest economic crisis since the Great Depression, the fact that physical copies of Horizon 5 shipped without including the complete game is scornful even before calling out the disingenuous and underhanded disclosure of online requirements on the back of the box. Worse still, the fact that over 80% of the game's content is directly controlled by both Microsoft and Playground games gives them an unsettling amount of freedom to alter the experience over time. We have built um, with evolving worlds in mind, um, knowing that we want to support Forza Horizon 5 into the future. Um, so we have built it in a way that we can update the, the world uh, as we continue to um, to add more content to the world uh, and also maybe remove content or change content um, and as we move forward there will be more on this uh, in the future. Concerns about customer ownership aside, artificially imposed internet requirements remain the greatest hindrance to Horizon 5 in the here and now. It is both ironic and tragic that a game marketed on providing everyday people with both an inexpensive and accessible escape to a tropical paradise full of luxurious cars is itself held hostage behind an expensive luxury. One that remains inaccessible for far too many people. Um, we did have the Ethernet cable plugged out, which is why it said trying to find a Horizon Live session at the top of the screen the whole way through. Don't worry about that. You'll have the internet at home. <laughs> <laughs>
Despite all these distasteful business practices and aforementioned problems, it remains difficult to harbor disdain for Horizon 5. The online requirements are obnoxious at best, but the hours of waiting for the final download melt away as soon as the game begins. The dialogue is childish and the delivery is cheesy, but the career itself is undeniably captivating. The carving of content leaves gaping holes in the car roster, but what remains is an undeniably eclectic collection of amazing automobiles. The foliage may fade into existence mere meters in the distance, and the parrots may be little more than a handful of polygons, but the environment itself is undeniably the most diverse and spectacular open world a racing game has ever brought to life. As a whole, the game falls well short of earlier entries in the series, but in a small handful of key areas, it easily surpasses its predecessors. Make no mistake, Forza Horizon 5 is deeply flawed in many ways, many of which are all the more infuriating due to the brazen deliberateness with which they are implemented. But at the end of the day, it's hard to have anything other than a smile on your face while racing across Mexico. Sometimes, you just have to let go and enjoy the ride. Thank you guys so much for watching. This project was a labor of love and took way longer than I was expecting to finish. Life got in the way, I had to help take care of an elderly relative, a family pet passed away unexpectedly, and so I didn't really have either the time or the mental bandwidth to work on this for several months. Even without all that, it was still a, you know, pardon the pun, Goliath undertaking. Uh, the script was over 8,000 words, I had to play multiple versions of the game in order to get all the relevant footage and information that I needed uh, to speak, you know, competently on it. Uh, I recorded hundreds of video clips, I had to re-record a bunch of that stuff in order to either get a better footage or a better frame rate. Uh, there were some clips that were basically impossible to reproduce, so I interpolated them multiple times each and then I manually spliced them together frame by frame in order to try to smooth out the frame rate as much as I possibly could. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and while there are certainly some frame drops and sort of iffy frame pacing here and there, uh, I hope you guys appreciated it. I can't really make any promises as to when either myself or my partner are going to be able to put out any new content on this channel in the near future, but at some point we are still hoping and planning on putting out a few different videos that we've been talking about for a while. Um, we still want to put out that list video talking about the things we want and don't want in Skate 4. Uh, we still want to put out a video analyzing the Ludo narrative in Metro Exodus, and we're still hoping to put out a video essay and sort of a retrospective on the 2016 episodic release of Hitman. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to share it on social media, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and, of course, ring the bell to see more videos like this one from the classiest cavern on the World Wide Web.